Well, folks, we're just going to have a small conversation today about what it's like being a YouTuber in the Nintendo sphere right now and the difficulties behind some of the things we're doing and why we're making a fundamental change coming up here on April 1st. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like our April 1st set is going to be completed on time. Uh, that's fine. It'll be still done next week, but we're going to kick off the show April 1st anyways. And no, it's not an April Fool's joke. We're not trying to yank your leg. We're really going to have a show on April 1st. But it's been extremely hard over the last week to make videos. And it, honestly, if I'm just being completely just upfront to you guys, it's been very hard pretty much this entire year. And honestly, this probably goes all the way back to September of last year in terms of making videos. Now, you might go, well, Nate, you're a news channel. You know, you could just... Bust out news on anything like, hey, today we had the latest Famitsu sales and Princess Peach Showtime was number one overall at 77,000 in sales and Nintendo Switch OLED is number one in system sales at 60,000. And we could talk about that stuff and, well, we're actually going to. But here's the thing about my position here as a content creator. We are a news and discussion channel. We cover our rumors, we cover our news, and we create discussions. That's what our podcast is every week. It's what we're doing, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday during our live streams. We even have discussions sometimes when we're playing games on YouTube Shorts because we have those live streams as well for those that catch them. But really what I primarily do is talk about news and rumors and all that stuff right here. And one thing that's happened really since September of last year is the channel has been heavily reliant on rumors, in particular about Nintendo Switch 2. And I love talking about new systems. I love talking about new consoles. I love talking about these sort of rumors. But as time has gone on, uh, things have become clear about a few things. One, the people creating the most exciting rumors, let's say someone like Zippo or more recently, Nash Weedle turn out to not necessarily be as reliable or reliable at all as we thought. Uh, Nash Weedle has been uh, called out now by Pioro. Uh, and by the way, so has Zippo. Zippo uh, actually dropped an F-bomb on Twitter today about Zippo. Uh, not today, yesterday about Zippo. And he did eventually delete it, but like it was seen by hundreds of thousands of people. So... I'm not going to throw that stuff up on screen because, look, if you guys care about that stuff, you can dig into it. And we all know Pioro is one of our most reliable insiders. And we had an, an insider retire yesterday or step away in Midori. Uh, Midori is a famous Atlas and Sega insider who is as reliable as Pioro, but specifically for Sega and Atlas. And you guys might see some of these Sonic Heroes Unreal Engine 5 stories going around. And man, oh man, oh man, did I really want to cover that Sonic Hero stuff. It sounded exciting. Obviously, it was a GameCube game at one point, so you can obviously see where there's a connection here to think, hey, this is going to come to Switch or Switch 2, uh, specifically Unreal Engine 5, probably Switch 2, and you can get really excited about it. And it started with a Necro Felipe Lima rumor, and then... You know, Midori sort of said, well, yeah, the conversations happened. And then he later clarified or she later clarified. Sorry, it's a she uh, that, yes, uh, while there is a number of Sonic projects are considering with Unreal Engine 5, Sonic Heroes is one of them. But there's no active development, and meaning that Sonic Heroes may not actually get made. It's just one of several Sonic games are considering putting into Unreal Engine 5. And that's fine. I, I honestly don't have a problem with that. Uh, Midori's very reliable, and I'm glad that they added all this clarification with all the rumors going up. But there was some discussions apparently behind the scenes that might have went to a certain person, and that certain person might have talked to Zippo, and then Zippo went and put it up on his blog. And if you don't know who any of these people are, that's fine. Just know they're a bunch of real insiders, real leakers like Pioro, Midori, etc., getting mixed in with fake ones like Nash Weedle and Zippo, and just causing a lot of confusion and getting real insiders like Midori just upset and wanting to step away and not do this anymore. And I understand you got to take care of yourself, take care of your mental health. Social media can be a real dragon. When you're an insider, it can be really frustrating when you're the real source of information but not being credited for things. And Zippo did respond on his blog. <laughs> Not going to get into a lot of this. Zippo has, doesn't have a good reputation in the first place, so we're going to leave it at that. But here's the thing. That's leaker drama that's happened over the last 24 hours, and one big Sega story that I was going to cover that I ended up not because the whole situation just seems very strange. Uh, but yes, 
Apparently, Sonic Heroes, among other Sonic games, are being considered for Unreal Engine 5, according to Midori. That's pretty cool. I do want to say that that's just more rumor stuff. And as the rumor drama started stirring up, it really made me start to think about what we're doing as a channel. And I really, really like covering rumors. They're a lot of fun. But the funnest of rumors are often the ones that are not real, right? A lot of the stuff we covered from Zippo over the last year or stuff we've covered from Nash Reed, a lot of this stuff probably isn't happening. And, you know, we even saw stuff where we thought, you know, Necrophilippe Lima was a super reliable person. And then they gave an exact date for a direct and then that didn't happen. And it got delayed or whatever the case might be. And, and that turned out to be a bunch of hogwash. And I'm not really hurt by all of this stuff. I'm not let down. I'm not disappointed. It's more so that it's taken a little bit of the fun out of what I do in making videos. Because really, what I want to talk about is news. Yes, rumors, of course, are going to be part of the, the news mill. And yes, the rumors get the most views. Let's just be honest. But I don't want to rely on that and the problem when you're making single topic videos like I've been doing is that when you only have that one topic you need that one topic to be a banger that one topic needs to be exciting that one topic needs to drive interest and doing things like hey Princess Peach Showtime was number one in the Japanese charts that's a cool headline but Princess Peach Showtime that topic's not being searched very much on you know on on uh, on YouTube and because of that it just would not be a super good video like a, a, the video could be good could be informative but then we cover the Famitsu chart we do our thing maybe we tack in one little tiny story on top of that and we get our couple thousand views and move on and that's not the kind of content I want to do if I'm going to cover a story like that I want it to be more broad spectrum so in the past on my channel we've done things like prime news and here's the news kind of news gathering shows that were kind of hodgepodge and tossed together and there'd be some comedy in them and stuff like that and I'll probably always keep a smidge of comedy I went a little over the top at times maybe it won't be as over the top but I want to treat news in a more serious way now this doesn't mean we're going to get rid of single topic news videos if there's ever like a really big story that I have a lot to say on I do think that always is going to warrant its own individual topic and I do want to keep covering that and maybe as we get into the switch 2 era there'll just be more and more of those kind of videos here's the reality nintendo switch is winding down man it's winding down we are in the you know whatever you want to say the latter half the later years the end of the road whatever the case might be we don't know when nintendo's next platform is coming but we do know that there's just not a lot of exciting things announced for Nintendo Switch, like the biggest debate lately has been is, you know, the, the biggest conversation anyway is, is the, the thousand year door a remake or a remaster? I mean, Game Explain put up a video about it, which is fine. These conversations have been raging. We just had this debate over on Andres Restart's channel and on our podcast yesterday. And that's cool. But man, it's not really like whether or not it's a remake or remaster doesn't really matter. It's a good game and we like to play good games, but it's also an old game. And so unless there's like new content and the only indication we have of that is a purple Yoshi, which could have just been an added character for the scene and might not even be extra content unless you're going to say, well, because he wasn't in the original. Like, okay, yeah, I guess he's an extra character for the scene, but it doesn't necessarily, you know what I mean? Like we don't still have, we don't have really new content news about that. There's no DLC in the works right now for anything. Uh, the new one big new announcement this year was Pokemon Legends ZA, but that's not coming until 2025. So we may not even hear or see about that till towards the end of this year. So as a content creator in the later years, or maybe even the last full year of Switch, it's been a little rough. Uh, we don't have big game news to lean on. We don't have big new features being added to Switch like we did back in the day when we had Nintendo Switch Online coming out and new platforms we had added to Nintendo Switch Online as, as you know, much as like a year ago. Or, uh, you know, like now we're making big deals out of a 1.3 update to F099. You're starting to see headlines about that because we don't have anything big to talk about. So... Here is what I'm doing and what I'm adjusting, and this is what's happening next week. And this wasn't going to be my video today. I was waiting for some sort of big topic today, and it just never materialized. We're launching a new show on April 1st. It's happening, period. Even if the set's not done being built, we'll still use the set. 
Uh, whatever's missing from it will just get added throughout the week. It is what it is. We can't handle the fact that, you know, paycheck delays happen and banks take forever to deal with their stuff. So behind the scenes gobbledygook that I'm dealing with to finish off the set. And also a product we ordered for the set is now delayed. It's life. Everything's still going to arrive next week, but it was supposed to arrive by tomorrow. And that's not the case. So we'll just deal with that. But what I want to focus on specifically is a new show. And the new show is still going to be on news. And you might go, Nate, why would you keep going with news? You just talked about how unreliable it is, how slow it is. Because I love news. And there's a lot of stories out there I'm really not talking about because they don't fit as a solo video. There's no headline topic. And when you don't have that headline topic, you tend to not have anything major to talk about. Um, and you don't draw interest. So we're launching a new show. And I talked previously about Prime News, and here's the news. It's going to be like that. Kind of. So we're launching a new show straight up just called VG News. It's short for, if you can't guess it, video game news. And on that show, yes, we're going to be primarily focused on Nintendo, but we're going to bring in some of the biggest stories across the industry, whether it's PlayStation, whether it's PC, uh, whether it's a new game launch like Dragon's Dogma 2 that recently happened and some of the issues uh, with that. We could talk about that. Uh, well, we won't talk about that now because it's old news, but you know what I mean. That's an example of a story we could cover. Uh, we'll also obviously talk about Xbox news as well. Like, hey, there was a, a system that leaked for Xbox. Not really relevant to my channel, but could be relevant to a show like that. I don't know that those would be the headlines, but, you know, those are just examples of stories lately. And we can mix in all this other stuff, like the Famitsu sales updates every single week can be on our Thursday show every single week, or if not Thursday, Friday show, depending on the timing of the Famitsu sales. I think they come out early enough in the day that I could add them into the show, knowing they come out every Thursday because they're pretty consistent. But the point is that the show is going to be a news amalgamation of the whole industry that primarily focuses on Nintendo. So Nintendo will get the brux of it, but we'll bring in the stories that are biggest from across the industry. And part of the reason this is to give us more to talk about, but it's not just to give us more to talk about. It's what this show is. It's not prime news. It's not here's the news. It's VG news. And if you want to know What's the inspiration for it? Well, it's Hardware News by Gamers Nexus. And you're going to see a lot of just straight up influence and copying from some of the structure and some of the things that Hardware News does because I want to build a video game news show that's similar to his. Now, Gamers Nexus is a massive YouTuber, way bigger than we'll probably ever be. And his show is a weekly recap of all the tech news. And that's fine. He does a lot of other videos as well. Way deep diving interviews. Uh, goes to uh, hardware manufacturers, learns all this stuff is all done. They do, I'm not trying to be Gamers Nexus, but I want to build my show around it because I realized in looking around at the landscape of YouTube, there's no video game news show that's structured the way that his show is. It's very laid back. It's very conversational uh, and, and just kind of chill. Uh, yeah, we're going to have uh, a more zoomed out look. We're going to have... Uh, you know, uh, sorry, this way, timers over here. Uh, the timers are going to be for each topic. So as we get to a topic, you're going to see how long that topic lasts, and you'll physically see on screen what timestamps almost at all times, besides when we're splicing in trailers and imagery and things related, uh, letting you know, hey, if you're done with this story, here's the timestamp of the next one in addition to what will be down in the bar. That's right. The show will always be timestamped, and that's really exciting too. And it could cover up the 10 stories. Uh, I also want to note about the show is that we're not aiming for some arbitrary 8-minute target or 10-minute or 12. Uh, the show's as long as it needs to be. And look, you could argue you could just peel through headlines in 5 minutes and be done and have 10 stories out, a headline every 30 seconds. But we care about the conversations around the news and the context behind the stories. So we're not going to have like specific timestamps that go like, Here's the direct quote that's in the middle of this five-minute segment. That's not what we're going to do. We want to create conversations around all of this stuff. So we're going to deep dive into all these different stories every day, Monday through Friday. We're going to go into where, where the stuff originated from, how reliable some of these places are, and if there are people we've referenced in the past that we find to be reliable, like a Pioro or Midori, as an example, if it happens to be rumor or leak content, hate the hate, whatever. Uh, we're also going to deep dive into just 
the background of all of this. Like, hey, if we talked about that Xbox Series X white edition leak that's out there, you know, the context behind the fact that it doesn't have a physical disk drive. And how does this compare to the prior leaks we've gotten from Microsoft, you know, where stuff came out of the court documents with the trash can version and does this mean they scrapped that and they're going with instead this white all digital version and it's supposedly cheaper. How's that going to affect the marketplace? What does that do for the Xbox Series S one terabyte edition, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's just a lot of stuff there that um, we can deep dive into for longer conversations. I mean, you might get to a point where we have like six stories, but one of those stories takes 10 minutes for me to get through. Uh, we don't really care. We don't care if the episode is eight minutes long or if the episode hits 25, 30 minutes long. We are not putting a cap on it. It's going to take as long every day as it takes to get through the news with full context. Uh, and I find this to be a very informative, casual, laid back way to just once a day get together, guys, and just discuss all these big stories out there. Go over all the details, go into the context, and obviously throw some of my opinion and a few little comedic quips in there or whatever. I, I think it's going to be uh, pretty fun. And again, some of the stories will still be short, you know, one, two, three minutes. I'm not going to be trying to rush through to hit arbitrary times. It is Some of the stories will be shorter. Some of them will be longer. That's just the nature of, of how this show is going to be. And I hope you guys are along for the ride. Um, and again, this we'll still have some single topic stuff uh, thrown out there, right? That's still very much going to be a thing. But I hope you enjoy these more deeper dives into this stuff every day because um, a huge chunk of every day is going to be spent gathering, um, script writing, note taking, et cetera, for this. And again, when I say casual, like the notes are going to be like right in front of me, uh, whether it's on a tablet or sitting there on, on, on pieces of paper, I printed off notes on whatever the case is, the notes are going to be right there. You're going to see me look down on it. We're not trying to be like this super professional green screen, fancy graphic show. Like we'll have trailers spliced in when we need to We'll have appropriate imagery. It's going to be a lot of me on camera, countdown timer, going over things, showing quotes on screen, Blah, blah, blah. It's, it's going to be a nice show uh, with more professional editing, but also a lot more casual editing. We're not trying to excite you every 10 seconds, right? Uh, a more grown-up show for grown-up gamers. I, I, I think that's maybe a way to put it. Uh, and we'll still have our individual topic stuff when it's relevant. Uh, you know, as an example, big games coming out and there's a lot of little tiny things coming out. And we want to cover it all like Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, hey, there's some new footage here. There's a map update here. Like we'll still make those videos. But don't be surprised if like a lot of that content, if it's like three videos in a day, like with Tears of the Kingdom, gets summarized in the next video. If you don't want to watch all those, you can just watch our big video game news article that will just have all of it in a shorter segment. So I'm really excited for this show and my excitement for this show has made making videos this week very very difficult because at this point without this show ahead i would be all over that sonic heroes story that turns out maybe wasn't as a for sure thing as it sounded like i would have been all over uh, a lot of things that have happened out there this week like white on rice but instead i realized that none of these stories are a big deal and in full context uh, or even less deals than they seemed like at the time. And in slowing down in that respect, I feel like you're going to get a better show. So we're still aiming to have this show happen Monday through Friday. Uh, weekends are still going to be a free-for-all. Whatever content I get out is what I get out. Um, we're still planning to do our live streams and all that. And one big thing I want to note is this show, we are planning to launch it at 10 a.m. every Monday through Friday. We're actually going to be recording the entire show the night before. So every Sunday... Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night. We're going to be actually recording the show uh, the day before. We're going to be spending a lot of time gathering all the stories and, and making all our notes. Uh, and then we're still going to leave enough room at 10 a.m. It leaves enough room. Like, let's say Nintendo drops a direct announcement at 8 a.m. Central Time. There's time enough for me to go get a quick recording in and throw that segment into the video, even if it messes up all the editing I've worked on at that point. I don't know. It, it's just going to be something we'll deal with on the fly because I want to make sure that we're doing good. I don't want you to wait 24 hours for breaking news from the morning. Or it's possible I get the episode out and I drop an, drop an individual video on the Nintendo Direct. So, again, you're still not waiting for that breaking news. Again, my whole goal isn't to be like a spawn wave or like some of these other news channels where you wait for all the news and spend 24 hours and then you get the news. I want you to get as up-to-date informal news as I can in the hardware news Well 
any breaking news like that, we're still doing our individual news segments. A huge rumor drops or a huge report or a huge Nintendo Direct announcement. I want to be all over that, but still provide this to you every day. So, um, and also I think in gathering a lot of smaller stories together for a bigger show, uh, let's say we don't have any big news from PlayStation, Sony, or PC, but what we do have is um, a bunch of small Nintendo stories like the F-099 update and the, uh, you know, the, the Famitsu sales for Princess Peach Showtime or uh, something else that a new demo drop for a big anticipated indie game or whatever, but it's still not a banger. We throw everything together, it can still make for a pretty damn good show. How I title it, how the thumbnails are done, that's what's being figured out right now. Uh, because we have a lot of ideas there floating out there trying to make it more casual, but also more like, hey, it's obvious that this is a specific show that's not like the rest of my videos. Hope you guys are looking forward to it. This video is already longer than I want. There's no editing in this video. It's just cut the intro, cut the beginning or the end, and we just go with it because I just wanted to have an open conversation. Thank you guys for tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you tonight. We have a live stream tonight happening. We're also going to be playing uh, some Fortnite before then, so... Catch you guys later, everyone.